whenever I come to Dachau, I've been here many times and walk through that gate, I think of the victims and uh, everything that happened here and it's always a very heavy feeling, but I always think of one guy in particular. Uh, we have the coat of one of the inmates here at uh, the Gettysburg Museum of History and my thoughts are always with him when I go through this gate. I'm going to go over some very sensitive artifacts we have at the Gettysburg Museum of History. The, these particular artifacts are not currently on display. They're going to be in a, in a future exhibit that we're currently working on where we are going to tell the story of the Holocaust through some artifacts. And um, it's going to be part of our Band of Brothers exhibit that we're working on where we um, go through the various stages of the war. and. Um, I'm going to start out with this star. This is a star that was given to German Jews. Um, they were forced by law to identify themselves in the beginning, in, in the earlier years. And um, that's the German word for Jew. And it's made out of a, a thin material. And you see these sometimes um, that, that were not used, um, meaning that they're, they're unused versions. But this one was actually used, and this was removed from a garment of clothing and you can see it's sewn back here and um, you know there's a lot of fakes of these in the collectors market so you will people who collect antiques and they go to flea markets and stuff you'll, you'll see these sometimes the fakes but this this is a true original it was sourced from um, a, a source in, in Europe a, a historian over there and um, you know, this is what the real ones look like. So, but if you're if you're an amateur collector, um, don't buy these at flea markets because there's lots of fakes of these around. Um, the next item I want to show you is this um, inmate's coat, and, and this came from someone who was housed at, at the Dachau concentration camp. Um, it, it's the coat and the hat, and this was sourced from a family originally in the early 80s, I believe, and it was in the museum in La Glaise, Belgium. And we bought it, we got it directly from them. And um, this person was a political prisoner. Um, they, they were at Dachau for, at the, towards the end of, of the, the, uh, the World War II period. And the, 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 according to the documents we have, they, they went home, but they, they took their um, insignia off in, for the journey home. I guess they didn't want to be identified as a political prisoner. Um, and, and this was reapplied. Now this and this was put back on and it's not original to the uniform. The uniform is 100% original except for the insignia. And this is the cap that came with it and it's from the same person. And when it was in the museum, for a while it, it had a had a plaque here and I, I believe it got faded because of that you can see the difference but um, the Leglaze Museum no longer interprets that area of history so they decided to deassess those items and uh, we wanted one that we were confident that was original and, and so this is original and again you see a lot of fakes of this kind of material on the collector's market but these are originals 100% except for the insignia that was added by the person who owned it later on before they gave it to the museum but um, you know very dark period of history and, and you know these kind of artifacts are extremely sensitive and uh, they, they need to be exhibited properly and as I said we're, we're working on an exhibit that I think will be a, a, a proper tribute to the, the, the Holocaust and the people that suffered. A few things to add about this this uh, concentration camp garment. Now, as Eric mentioned, the the triangle 
and the identification number up here were not original to this garment. But there is something that, that we can learn from this. The, the Germans had a color coding system for the people that they were holding in the concentration camp. So as he mentioned, red was for political prisoners. So think like communists. Uh, a green triangle would be like for a commun or for a, a convict or a criminal. Uh, blue triangles were for uh, forced foreign laborers. Uh, you also would have had purple triangles for Jehovah's Witness, pink triangles for uh, homosexuals or, or sexual offenders, um, and you know black triangles for people uh, that were like Roma or who were maybe mentally ill. Something else that they have here at the museum that is one of the more chilling artifacts connected to the Holocaust is this can. This is an original can that held pellets of something called Zyklon B. Uh, Zyklon B was an insecticide um, that, that was, was used uh, starting in the 1920s. Zyklon is German for cyclone, and there you can see it says gift gas. Uh, that means poison gas. And whenever it comes into contact with water or air, uh, Zyklon B would release hydrogen cyanide, which would basically block cellular respiration and uh, kill anybody who was breathing it in within a, a matter of minutes. So whenever you look at these items, what we were looking at are pieces of evidence of some of the, the worst crimes against humanity that have ever been committed. We are living in an era where knowledge about the Holocaust is at an all-time low and where Holocaust denial is at an all-time high. And it's through these artifacts and through uh, different efforts in education that, that we can push back against that and kind of look at human nature and uh, as it says on, on many monuments at some of these concentration camps, uh, say, never again.